right, so we essentially just heard that um, when we have a strong base or a strong nucleophile, uh, it doesn't wait around, so it always does either SN2, E2, or a mixture of SN2 and E2. Um, but, and, and, and what it does was entirely dependent on the identity of the alkyl halide. Here we have a secondary alkyl halide and a primary alkyl halide, and with a base like OH-, minus, um, that is going to force this situation. If, if, if we treated with OH-, minus, it would do exclusively SN2, and if it was OH-, minus, we would get a mixture of SN2 and E2 with the secondary alkyl halide. But the question is, how can we force E2 with these types of molecules, so secondary or primary alkyl halides? And essentially, let's think about how about why tertiary alkyl halides only do E2 and they don't do SN2. So why do tertiary, al tertiary alkyl halides only do E2? All right, you thought about it? Yep, it's because it's hard for the nucleophile to get to the antibonding orbital when we have those different CH groups all around that antibonding orbital. So the question is how can we make it more difficult to reach the antibonding orbital or the sigma star orbital. Um, so it was hard to reach it with the tertiary alkyl halide because that had a bunch of branching groups that, that blocked that backside, blocked that partial positive. Uh, but in these cases, it's, it's pretty open. Here, uh, it'd be a mixture, but here it's, it's open enough to get almost exclusively SN2. But how can we make it challenging for the nucleophile or base to get there. And essentially, what we need to do is combine that strong basic moiety. And in that last page that we talked about, we always had an H here that's really small. But what if we had something that was huge? So we'll just say R large, and we'll, we'll just write large here too. If we had the oxygen, and that oxygen was attached to a huge group, that would make it really challenging for that molecule to reach that sigma star orbital. And that's what we do if we want to force E2 <clears throat> when we have a pretty wide open alkyl halide. Um, so what's the biggest group that you can think of? What's the widest group that you can think of? Um, and when you think about that, think back to when we were naming different branched substituents, because we want it to be really branched. We want it to be really wide. Um, so you paused, you thought about that for a little bit, because we want the biggest, widest group possible. So essentially, we're going to combine that O minus with a big, broad group. So we're going to use a tert butyl group. Um, we need a counter ion, so we'll just put potassium on there. But this is called potassium tert butoxide. Um, sometimes we write this OT butyl like this, O minus with a T butyl. So that's T butyl right there. Uh, but essentially, that this group is so huge that it's going to have a really hard time fitting into that small antibonding orbital space. It's going to make it more likely that it's going to run into the hydrogens um, on the on the beta carbon position. So. Um, we put that in with a polar aprotic solvent. We'll put a different polar aprotic solvent down here just to remind you of a different one. Um, potassium OT butyl is how we could write this um, without drawing out all those carbons. Those are going to force E2. So if we modify the reaction with a large sterically hindered, base, so we're modifying the reaction by using a large sterically hindered base, it's going to force E2 because it can't reach that antibonding orbital. Um, the other thing is we're like, oh, how can we force E2? Well, is there a way to force SN2 with a really substituted alkyl halide? And the answer is no. There's not really a good, there's no easy way to get exclusively, exclusively SN2 um, when using a strong base and a strong nucleophile. It's going to be dependent on the substitution pattern. But we do have this really large base where we can force E2 if we would want to. So um, that is really useful because sometimes we might want to do an elimination and not have the substitution byproduct.